Okay, so welcome to the probably first part of the reassembly of the engine and as I said in the first video of the or the second video of the block analysis I have bought a new oil pump. As you see here we have the old one and the new one because I want to show some stuff about the old one. Uh, again I will show a clip how the backing plate looked. So the plate that is screwed on here and where you can actually see the wear of the oil pump. You can also see that in the gears but not as it's not as pre prevalent than or as in the back plate itself but the gears have some scratches here as well which are or can or are noticeable but not noticeable really with your finger. With the back plate there were deep scratches that were actually noticeable also by the uh, by your finger and your fingernail also. While yes you could get that plate resurfaced and also get those gears resurfaced yes but you would also have to have the housing machine down to the proper side, size if you have the uh, gears machine down and you obviously well that's gonna be uh, kind of a lot of money compared to a new pump while yes new pumps for some engines may be a bit more expensive or for example like a boundary oil pump will be 500 bucks or so and that might be worth it if you have damage on that but on a stock pump like this it's not going to be worth it and for example this pump along with the included seal and the included uh, o-ring for the crankshaft was 80 bucks so not really worth it in that case. I'm also going to show you what you can do to improve your oil pump. While there are a lot of people who take out this spring right here, so that's basically the oil pressure relief valve that opens in most cases, most engines it's going to be about 60 psi or 4 bar and if you put for example there is a uh, thing or a uh, washer that holds that spring inside and if you put in spacers there you can raise the maximum oil pressure your engine can reach otherwise it will just open at that oil pressure for example in most cases as I said 60 psi or 4 bar and then it will release the excess oil um, back into the oil pan and will not build any more pressure. The issue with that is that um, when you are running higher oil pressure that is some people think that this is better for the engine because on a higher oil pressure you have a better cushion for your bearings and for well in general while that is in some cases true if you run very high power for example or relatively loose tolerances um, the issue it comes in when you raise the pressure then the oil pump is more prone to cavitation so that it starts to or tries to pump the oil but due to very high um, very high rpm and harmonics in the crankshaft this will lead to cavitation earlier and cavitation can actually lead to those gears fracturing so because they are a powdered metal basically pressed into a uh, into this shape they can basically explode or rather they can shatter and then you have a non-working oil pump anymore. So I always leave that alone and only change the oil, maximum oil pressure if you have a valid reason to. Because also on an NA engine or in general on any engine but on an NA engine you will notice a difference because a high oil pressure, high oil pressure will cause more friction and therefore more oil temperature and also a little bit of a loss in power. The next thing you can do and actually is recommended is would be to port your oil pump. A lot of people have explained this in the past and I'm just going to be going to give you a quick overview. So you can see this hole, hole here which is the oil passage for the oil to go through. The oil pumps it basically it sucks it in here and pumps it into this hole and it goes into here into the block. You can pull off or pull out this, this bolt here and then what you can do is you can port the opening here so make the opening a bit smoother so that it has a curve inside it which leads to a better flow so you don't have the edges right here which are on a normal hole just like that and you also can port the curve or rather the, the corner the 90 degree bend the oil has to go through so it can travel smoother 
into the oil passage and the oil gallery. This is a bit more um, tricky because you cannot uh, fit a, a like something to really grind away stuff here. But uh, for example, with a small Dremel and a small or a small file or something, you might be able to smooth that out a bit. That might be or that is a way where you can smooth out or increase your oil pumps flow. Though it will not do that much uh, in theory. So on a 4AG for example, it is most important that you get an oil pump with the thicker gears. There are three different variants. One has a different shape. I will put in pictures for you. Um, that is a bit more, has a bit more edges. That is most prone to cracking. Then there is a, another de design that has the same shape as this. And then there's this design, which was used in the 20 valve engines, that is a bit thicker and also has the newer design. And this one is the one you have, uh, you want to have, because you can rev to 8.5 or 9,000 RPM with this without any massive issues. Most oil pumps you get in the aftermarket, like this one from Izin, which is basically the stock or the OEM manufacturer, are going to have these bigger gears. How you can measure that? Well, you can basically measure it from this inside diameter. If this from here to here basically has the bigger diameter, I'm going to show you the measure measurements right, right now. Um, then you have the newer oil pump. You can see it also by this lip, which is a bit more pronounced. And on the back side, this is a bit more pronounced. And uh, otherwise, yeah. Now for how or what you do before you install the oil pump. Obviously, you have to install every gasket that is available. Do not use silicone here. Absolutely do not use silicone, use the included gasket. In this case, it even comes with the oil pump and also do the same here. Do not use any silicone. Although there is a groove for silicone or an O-ring in theory, do not use that. Do use the gasket that is included because silicone, if it goes in there, it will go into your bearings and uh, yeah, basically clog up any oil flow and you don't want that. Then you also want to prime your oil pump. Well, some people do that with packing it with grease, which is not recommended and you shouldn't do because it's not going to build oil pressure. The thing to prime it is get some engine oil. You can also use thicker, uh, relatively thick oil so that it stays in the pump longer. If you, for example, plan to, um, plan to assemble it and the engine will sit for a few weeks or months, then you can also put in some assembly lube here, but only assembly lube, not any grease or shock grease or whatever, just use assembly lube, uh, which is a thicker oil, and that will help to pull uh, oil for the oil pump. What I'm usually doing, I have some normal engine oil here, I put some in here, so okay. Then I spin the oil pump and I look out here when the oil is coming out of there. You might not see it right away. Might need a bit more there. Okay. And there you go. The oil is coming out of here and now the pump is primed. The oil pump needs a film of oil so that it can pull a vacuum from for the oil in the oil pan. So it can actually pull that oil back up. If it does not have any fluid in there, it's going to take a massive amount of RPM compared to now uh, to get some oil flowing. In this case, the oil pump will probably be able to um, pull enough oil to fill all the oil galleries in like 10 to 15 seconds and you will have oil pressure already. On If you would run it dry, it may even not have the chance until it is at idle RPM, so like a thousand RPM and until then, if you didn't use assembly lube, your engine will basically run dry and the oil pump will also run dry and in the worst case, will get damaged by that, for example, if you let it crank long enough. So that's something I would always recommend and I just showed you how to do it. And um, yeah, that's basically 
one of the first basics you should do when installing the oil pump. Next video I'm going to go about honing the cylinders and installing piston rings, piston, etc.